Support for this and all the other podcasts on the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Momento. Yes, you can use AI to make your job as a marketer easier. Momento is built to put the power of AI in your hands. It can write social media captions, have it watch or listen to a podcast and suggest, then automatically create social media posts to promote the show. Heck, it can even listen to a podcast episode, then write a poem about it you can use on your company blog. Go check it out. MPN listeners can try it for free at bit.ly slash Momento MPN. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash Momento MPN. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. You know who I am by now, but if in case you don't, I'm Seth, your host. Um, today, I have a buddy of mine, David Schneider. He is the CEO of Shortlist.io, which is a marketing company, white label marketing service for agencies that add revenue without the overhead. He is based out of Philadelphia. He is a serial entrepreneur. This guy's been busy. He's been busy. He's traveled to those over 60 countries in the world, which I didn't know there was that many in the world. No, I did, but still. I mean, that you would want to visit, too. So that's pretty wild. We'll have to talk about that a little bit. He is a CEO of Focus, which is a organizational management tool to help you set and crush your goals, your OKRs, be exact. He is also the CEO and co-founder of Insp- Inspire. I'll, he'll pronounce it better when I get him on there, but that's an employment and engagement tool. He's done a lot, this guy. He's done a lot, and he's not that old. He's not grizzled yet. So, hey, Dave, how's it going, dude? Hey, Seth. Uh, doing well, man. Thanks for having me. You're also the chief bottle washer over at the Philly Tech Entrepreneurs Slack and in-person event thingy. I don't know what to call it. It's, it's get a, together. Meetup. Yeah, we'll call it a meetup. Yeah, we'll call it we'll a meetup. Meet you have two little kids, right? I do, yeah. A wife and a dog, right? No dog. No dog. Almost, yeah. but you're, 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 you're busy. You, you don't sleep. Everyone has their limits, right? And I draw the line at everything you just mentioned. And the animals exactly. Just no dog. Out. No dog. Not yet, at least. Until the kids beg you for one. Not yet. Or until they you know, come up with yards in Philadelphia. Yeah, that's kind of true. Because you're downtown. You're down in graduate hospital area. Not exactly. to dox you or anything, but you know. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. You'll survive. You're not that famous. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. Hey, so Dave, how did it all get started? I mean, I know you. I mean, you started on the corporate world. You did some work for Capital One, and then you said screw it and went travel the world, pretty much. Uh, actually, my wife said screw it uh, to get credit <laughs> where credit is due. Um, I was prepared to just you know do the whole corporate nine to five or nine to whatever was needed for decades. Try to rise that ladder, maybe go to business school, something like that. I had a very traditional path in mind. Yeah. Um, after about a year or so, uh, she was working. We were in DC at the time. She was working yeah. a similar style job. She said, "I'm done with this. Do you want to go travel? Uh, if not, mm-hmm. I'm leaving without you." Uh, oh, and I said, oh, "I said okay." Oh. Uh, oh, you yeah, know, I, I guess I'm stick with you exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we went. We went off. Uh, we went backpacking, and I started working online because that was the only way to do anything when you're yeah. just kind of moving from country to country. One thing kind of led to another, and and then here we are. Exactly. So your team is stateside and in Macedonia of all places, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, it's uh, it's a country that's like a bit north of Greece. Um, whenever I mention it, very few people know where it is, uh, but it is yeah, it's a, in the Balkans. It's, it's a Balkans, yeah. It's a, it's, see, you know more countries than you let on. No, uh, I know. That. <laughs> I, I, well, that's my that's my what eighth grade geography class. Okay, yeah. So I had to like, memorize all the all the countries in Europe. Yeah. Okay. It's one of them. Yeah. It's landlocked. Uh, it doesn't get as much travel, but it's a great place. Um, great culture. Lovely yeah. people work in there. They speak really good English. Uh, very a hard language to understand now. Uh, yes, yeah. I speak Russian, so I kind of get some stuff, but it's not exactly one for one. But, it, but it's not Cyrillic. It, it, it's um, Roman characters, right? It's just They do both. Yeah. Oh, geez. Let's make it really complicated. Yeah. So you gotta, yeah. You got to do it all. We're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsors, and get right back to the show. As a person with a very deep voice, I'm hired all the time for advertising campaigns. 
But a deep voice doesn't sell B2B. And advertising on the wrong platform doesn't sell B2B either. That's why if you're a B2B marketer, you should use LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn has the targeting capabilities to help you reach the world's largest professional audience. That's right. Over 70 million decision makers all in one place. All the big wigs, then medium wigs. Also small wigs who are on the path to becoming big wigs. Okay, that's enough about wigs. LinkedIn ads allows you to focus on getting your B2B message to the right people. So, does that mean you should use ads on LinkedIn instead of hiring me, the man with the deepest voice in the world? Yes. Yes, it does. Get started today and see why LinkedIn is the place to be to be. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash mpn to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash mpn. Terms and conditions apply. You got to do it all. That's wild. A little left over from, from the Cold War era. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Let's do everything. Let's do everything. Why not? You know, it's sort of like Dave over there. Let's do everything. So you speak Russian. Yeah, my wife is Russian, and uh, she was born in Moscow. Uh, she moved when she was four. Uh, but, oh, so she's, yeah, barely uh, Russian. Uh, barely uh, Russian in the way that I'm, like, barely Jewish. But uh, basically, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I should just say. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Jewish is fine. With yeah. anyway, Schneider, you're either German or Jewish. One of exactly, things. yeah, or both. Um, but in any case, um, so, yeah, l- you know, long story short, uh, when we were we were high school uh, sweethearts, uh, when I went Aww. to college, I started learning uh, Russian to kind of understand what was going on over there. We broke up after about four weeks, but I decided to keep learning Russian uh, for four years anyway because I really liked it. I figured I'd meet someone new. Uh, but then at the end of college, we got back together, and I ended up learning the language in the meantime. That's good. So it kind of helps you out with the in-laws, though. Yeah, now I understand what her mom is saying about me all this time. It's exactly, she can't bad mouth you now. She's like, shit, I can't say bad things about Dave now. Not anymore. Are you fluent? Conversational. You can get around. I can, I can, do, I can do more than get around. I can do more than get around. But I don't Ooh, like the word. It's not, it's not an easy language. And it's all it's different not, alphabet. It's, yeah, it's a very hard language. Uh, and I always, I have a, it's one of those pet peeves around the word fluent, where for me, like, that's a very, very high bar that I wouldn't consider myself of. But certainly, but it's more you, than just Your, like, your mother-in-law can't bad mouth you in Russian. That, yeah. That's the bar you met. Like, yeah, you, that's you, the you, level. Yeah. It's the level. You know what they're saying about you. Exactly. So, so her, in, her, her family comes over from Russia and visits. And they say, who is this guy? Who is this yeah. guy in Russian? And you're like, blah, 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 back to them. And they're like, oh, crap. We just said bad things about him. That's kind of, that's kind of wild. <laughs> so short list. What is the whole premise behind that? You, It's like inbound linking and SEO and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, a lot of that good stuff. Uh, you certainly know the space as well as anybody. Yeah. We do some design and dev. We do content marketing strategy. We do some SEO, link building, things like that. Um, but recently, we've been trying to position ourselves more to be white labeled by other agencies. Oh, um, so we do work direct with brands for sure. But, you know, the services are really built to kind of be they're productized and they're meant that an agency could like take them kind of done for you, offer them to a client add their margin and, you know, focus on their strategy, their acquisition, whatever it is yeah. they need. So that's directionally more where towards we're moving. So that's pretty cool. And then you also, as if you're not busy enough with the family and all that, you you have focus at usefocus.com so what's, then that's kind of kind of a focus app for employees to stay focused at work <laughs> Yeah, I have a couple apps that I've been messing around with. Um, originally, prior to Shortlist, I was always a software guy. Um, my yeah. history was really about kind of uh, building Ninja Outreach and, and kind of managing the product and everything. So I've always really loved that. Um, but then after selling it, you know, I wanted to kind of get back into it. So a couple a couple of little irons in the fire, but they're more labors of love at this point. Yeah, kind of keep you busy as if you're not busy enough. Keep them busy. Exactly. So here's a question for you. What's the best thing about being an entrepreneur? I mean, other than traveling to 60 countries with your wife. Best thing about uh, being an entrepreneur, at least, uh, and I want to preface this by saying a lifestyle entrepreneur because that's what I consider myself to be. But the best thing about being a lifestyle entrepreneur is flexibility of your time and sort of really, you know, in this case, I got two young ones at home, right? I got like a one and a three year old. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So I'm in the thick of it. Uh, we're in the trenches, but I'm I'm there with them, right? I'm I'm around uh, most of yeah. the days. I can organize my schedule to prioritize the kids. I'm not missing out on a lot of the key moments, uh, the developmental milestones, and everything that's going on. So, without the lifestyle that I have right now from doing what I've been doing, it probably wouldn't be possible. Yeah, so that's what I have to say about having gold to me for 16 years. My 11 year old, I've seen him grow up. Like I've seen him grow up for better or for worse. I've seen him become an 11 year old little 
snot nosed little teenager, you know, who I love dearly, but who's a complete pain in the ass. That's what you have to look forward to. But um, but that's one thing about entrepreneurship. It's like I've I've been able to be around for it. I haven't missed those milestones, and I've yeah. seen them. And like like uh, funny, funny enough, some of these milestones, like you're not wearing diapers to bed, have happened with me when the wife's out, and I'm like, uh, like I'm not wearing I'm wearing underwear to bed. And I'm like, uh, uh, you, you 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 are that's gonna be a mess. <laughs> that of course, day. Of, course, of course, it was a mess. It, of course, that night he weed the bed. Yeah. And it was to be, but it was to be expected. But then, you know, he, like, all these little milestones, like if I was working nine to five, I'd be asleep at that hour. You know? Yeah. I, and I mean, it's, like, it's funny because people are like, oh, that's the memory you have. I'm like, it's dumbest, stupidest, silliest memories that parents cherish. You know, it's a, it's just this stupid little things like, you know, he sleeps in a big boy bed. It's like all that stuff. It's like, it's like, it's the joy, you know? That's a great memory. I love that. We haven't crossed that barrier yet, um, but I know That's it's right. coming. They'll throw it on you. They'll tell you when they're ready to do it. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm waiting. For and then it. you can't say no because you know that that's going to make them feel bad about themselves. Yeah. So you guys say, okay, I'll be up at three o'clock in the morning cleaning up the sheets. Oh, God. It is what it is. It is what it is. Kids, I mean, they grow up. And before you know it, they're 11. They're coding Roblox games in code, looking at YouTube and learning how to code. And I'm like, jeez. I, I, I didn't do this when I was 11. I, I'll I don't, know, I don't remember questions. what I was doing at 11, but it wasn't that. Yeah, no. Hey, give me eight years, and, and I'll give you. I'll let you know how it's going. We'll shut back in eight years. Exactly. So now on, other, on the flip side of, of what's the best thing about being an entrepreneur, what keeps you up at night being an entrepreneur? You know, the things that stress me out is mm-hmm. the, the day-to-day, the year-to-year volatility. Um, yeah. You know, and call me neurotic, but I'm always thinking like, uh, what if I wake up tomorrow and shortlist sort of no longer exists? What if nobody needs these services anymore? What if something about Google's algorithm changes or nobody wants Google anymore, AI or whatever it is? There's so many existential things yeah. um, that you can kind of worry about. Um, and some of that is a little bit inflated. It's really kind of, you know, you're making a mountain out of what a molehill. Google's hill. Not around tomorrow. Yeah, it's kind sure. of but Google's but, around tomorrow. But I've had, you know, massive yeah. income uh, swings, you know, from year oh, to year uh, okay. where, you know, sometimes, hey, it's gone up a lot, which is awesome. But sometimes it's been 50 percent of what it was the year before. You know, it's hard to kind of structure your life when you have that type of volatility. It's hard to know how to how to budget, you know, what type of purchases you can make and things like that. So there are definitely some uh, some some nuances there that is not for everyone. Yeah, exactly. So then what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? Now, it's going to be physical or metaphysical or you can go as woo-woo as you want to go with this. For me, uh, I guess if we're going, <laughs> uh, boy, I mean, for me, it's a to-do list. I don't know. That's a lame answer. But uh, no, realistically, you know, is very important when you're an entrepreneur. I feel that without um, kind of a set sort of God, these are what I'm planning on doing today. This is my, this is, you know, my task to do. I get totally lost in how to structure my time because entrepreneurship is so unframeworked, oh, right? Yeah. It's so unstructured. Um, I got to know that I've got these things to do. And it's not just necessarily professionally, it's personal as well about, I, I'm, I'll am i make notes about unloading the dishwasher and stuff like that. I, I just you need, won't, and your wife will be mad at you. <laughs> yeah, I need you. To, yeah, I know it'll be a lot of very strong curse words. I need to really understand like uh, what, uh, yeah, what I'm expected to do every day. I need that type of direction. Exactly, exactly. So are the kids bilingual yet? They are bilingual understanding. They are. Oh, uh, that's bad. Um, so they can understand it. So you can't, you can't, so, so, but they can, the, they can't spell English. So they can still spell. Right. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's like, it's can't, it's not even a secret language that we can speak to each other anymore because they do understand, uh, but they pretty much, you know, they, they speak the English. Yeah, well, that's pretty wild though. I mean, it's kind of handy because kids are such sponges and like literally I wish I learned a language at three because then that's when, that's, that's when the time is to learn something. It's Not when you're 42 yeah. years old. I forget my brain is set <laughs> and deteriorating right now. So yeah, it's pretty crazy how easy it was for them to pick it up uh, without any real formal uh, instructions at all. Meanwhile, like I just I grinded for four years in college. You know, yeah, you had to go to you had to go to Harvard and learn Russian. To exactly. Get it. Yeah, it was the only like, way. So it done. Picking it up, you know, like darn it. It's so you made it so easy, and it's not like we said. It's not an easy language. 
No. I'm I, glad... know, I know how to say no in Russian. Yes. And that's it. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad that that is. I don't know how to say yes. <laughs> it's done. But uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's done. It's in the past. It now exists as this passive entity in me. And it's I... kind of nice because you know, I took Italian in college a little bit. And once you lose it, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. At least yeah. your wife, you know, is fluent. I'm sure she is fluent. I should, she'll probably take that mantle. So, so you guys can like practice and keep it kind of. Yeah, for sure. I, I hear your in-laws. Speaking with the, she's speaking you with the kids. I've got the in-laws. So there's enough uh, in the ecosystem to kind of keep it. But I bet they want to practice their English with you. So because now do they sound like they're from Philadelphia now? They never, they don't, they don't want to speak English with me. No one wants to speak English with me, even native English speakers. Uh, no one <laughs> wants to speak with me whatsoever. Uh, but they are, they are in Boston. Oh, they're in Boston. Oh, God. So they're the Boston Russian accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's more. Yeah. Russian yeah. Accent. In yeah. the past, they kind of have, yeah. Yet. No. <laughs> more, yeah. It's sort of a, a, it's a weird R, right? You're rolling the R because it's Russian. Then you've got the Boston R. It's a mess. Oh my God. So you're like, wait, what did you say? I thought you understood Russian. Well, not Boston Russian. <laughs> that's fine. I don't know. We'll have to figure out what part the car at Harvard Yard is in, in the Russian. Exactly. Dialect. That's the only thing I know about Boston English is that I don't understand it. They don't understand me down here in Boston. They don't understand, I don't understand them. So, and we're in this, we're supposed to speak English. So go figure. So Dave, where is the best place for people to hang, hang out with you online? Where's your order hall of choice? Uh, if you want an immediate answer, shoot me an email. Um, I'm like an inbox zero guy, so I'm going to be Ooh. on it. Uh, DavidShortlist.io. But I have started to get more active on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. Kudos to you for that, uh, you know, for the encouragement. You've been kind of actively yeah. posting your, your content, and, and I've been uh, soaking that in. So, you know, oh, feel free to you. ping me there as well. I've been writing a lot of good stuff there. And it's David Schneider over there, even though he was with Dave, but you know, he's got that's be official and, and snooty on LinkedIn. So. David is my professional persona, correct? Professional persona, your, your MO. I like that. Well, Dave, thank you so much for being on the show. This has been so much fun, and we'll see everyone next time. That was a great show. If you're enjoying Entrepreneurs Enigma, please review us in the podcast directory of your choice. Every review helps other podcast listeners find our show. If you're looking for other podcasts in the marketing space, look no further than the Marketing Podcast Network at marketingpodcasts.net. Goldstein Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.